Hey guys, hope you're all having a great weekend so far. So today is not a deck guide. This is more of a pre-deck guide. So what we're going to be doing is building a deck together right here from an empty canvas and then playing a couple games and looking for areas to improve the deck, coming back into the deck builder, making a couple changes based on what we saw, then going back and playing a couple more games. And at the end, we're not going to have a final product today. I have the final product for tomorrow's video. However, we're going to talk about the key opportunities for change. So what needs to change? What doesn't feel smooth? How can we make it better? And so forth. So I'm very confident that the final version I came out with is very strong. I think it could potentially be one of the stronger Syndicate decks right now. But we've definitely come a long way from what you're going to see today. So again, it's like a completely different product between what we craft even on our second draft and what I did in the end because there was a couple more drafts in between and there was a few hours of games before I found something that I really liked. But uh, I'm doing that so you don't have to. We'll save you the time so you can just go and take that final product and import it right into your game and get started playing. So I'm really excited with the final one there. It's sitting around 80% win rate on six or seven games. So it's not all that bad. And I got some games recorded from that that I'll share with you guys as well. But for now, let's get right into this video and uh, let me know if you find these kind of videos useful. I don't anticipate that I'll be doing them often, but if it's something you want to see every other month or something like that, maybe I can throw one in. That's fine. So we'll get into this one here. What I just do is I normally split it up by faction so I can have a quick look at what the main core cards of the deck are going to be. I find it's a little bit distracting when you have all the neutrals and stuff present. So we're playing Tribute, okay? And that's important to see because we want to pick cards that are going to be our hero cards that have something to do with Tribute because Off the Books gives us the Tribute cost costing one less. To, it's a main reason to want to use that leader. So just use the tool tips, type in Tribute, have a look here. What can we work with, right? I need something that's going to be competitive. I really do. I want to win games. It's early on in the season. I want to keep that confidence up. So... Let's look for something here that's actually going to be as strong as possible, not super experimental. So for that reason there, a lot's going around Tribute. I think King of Beggars just makes a lot of sense. Fee 1, boost self by 1. While in deck, whenever you play, uh, pay a Tribute, remove counter for each coin paid. For each removed counter, gain 1 coin back. When the counter reaches 0, summon self from the deck to a random allied row, counter 12. So this is similar to the bounty deck that I played the other day with King of Beggars. In the way that we're going to be taking tributes progressively throughout the game. And this is going to help replenish those coin. Because with a leader ability that's not like Jackpot, for example, where you can't just click it all and get a full bank. right? This one, you, you can do a little bit of that. You, you kind of want to be able to just kind of store some coin, use them when you need them, right? So... I like the King of Beggars for that reason there. Another card I'm very comfortable playing is Professor. I really stand by it. Deploy, put a bounty on an enemy unit and damage it by 4. Tribute 3, ignore target's armor. So this is going to play very well into like engine decks and really just getting rid of things here. Now, I had an idea and the idea was to go instead of more of the Savola route, I was thinking, like, this is the only idea that I came up with before getting into this today. I was thinking about going more the Salamander route, and specifically single Salamander. And just setting up a lot of poison for round 3. That's an, something in my mind. However, if we do that, then we have to play a lot of our bronzes surrounding the poison package. Which I think I'm okay with at this point. So, temporarily we'll put the Salamander in, right? Being able to poison all units. Kind of big right it's just the only thing i'm worried about with this card though is that it plays horribly into nilf guard and everyone's spamming that right now so that might actually be bad we'd have to sort of push for last say so maybe it's not the way to go about it maybe it's not i do like the idea of tin boy damaging all units by two i mean with the matchup being Siege for one, that's pretty difficult. Anything Skoytel goes pretty wide as well. 
This could see some benefit there. Should be, yeah. I mean, that's not bad. I got the provision buff. I just don't know if it's quite worth 11. Because worst case, this could just play for like a 4-body Lacerate, right? And then we're paying 11 provisions for him. It's kind of tough here. What I do know is that the leader got a buff so that Savola being Tribute 8 means full leader Savola. So it feels like wrong not to take a card like this here. So Prophet 2, Tribute 9, Spawn of Savola's Frightener in the row. Savola's Frightener is this 12 point here. Makes a big difference, right? You get a big coin swing. I think that that's something that we play. Maybe not in around Cobb, but just something that we play for points. Because otherwise we are potentially lacking some points there. Now... Just looking a bit more into the tributes here. We have the Graydon, which is conditional because we need to have bounty on something and that's the only way we can finish the kill. I want to play something a little bit less con like conventional, a little bit less um, situational, right? And just go with like the Marils. Yeah, I meant more situational, not conventional. Conventional is Marils, but either way. Um, Marils just makes a lot of sense here. Damage an enemy unit by four. Tribute six. Damage destroyed instead. Um, I like to have a tall removal there. Now, coming back down here, it's one of those things where I haven't decided yet. I, I think that it's probably not the play to go with the poison here. So I like the Salamandra Mages. Tribute 4, damage 3, and adjacent units by 2. Whenever you play, uh, pay a tribute ability, gain 1 coin. Adrenaline 5, gain 2 coins instead. So this is like actually kind of like a pseudo Tin Boy. If you think about it, it's a little bit more consistent. Damage 3 units by 2 for 4. Right? It's actually 3 coin because leader. So I think that I'd rather play like 2 of these than 1 of these because... Two of these is 10 provision, 5 base power each. And then the passive ability makes it a little bit more attractive than uh, a Tin Boy. Now, going into the Bronze End, I've seen many different things here. So, I like the Renegade Mages quite a bit. I think that they're great. Damage an enemy by 1, Tribute 1, damage by 3. We're always going to have the ability of just getting the Tribute because Tributes are free with all the books, right? If it's a one thing. So... This, to me, 4 plus 3 is better than 7 if I had to choose. So I'm thinking we, we start with that. And we sort of look for our pairs. Like, I like doing pairs of bronzes because it helps me with my consistency. Like, being able to kind of just guarantee or just know every single time that uh, I'm, I'm getting what I need to get. It's consistent. Now... Boost and heal. I mean, that's not going to do a whole lot for me here. Tribute move. Tribute four. We're not swarming. We're not playing a lot of witch hunters, so Tamara is not really good here. I like Ludo. I like Ludo, and I've been seeing some pretty good success with Ludo. So I'm going to put them in temporary here just to get the coins real quick so that we have full bank. We want to get that circulation in pretty strong, right? And if I'm looking at just Syndicate in general now, we want to be able to get Boat out quickly. I'm thinking we go for that as a thinning option. So Tiger's Eye, gain 5 coins is pretty effective. That brings me into getting the Boat here. So Flying Redanian, Horde 9 on turn end, summon this card or this unit from your deck graver to a random allied row. So with the consistency issue in mind, Redanian really helps that out quite a bit. Now, we're still falling under Devotion. However, I think the Devotion route might be a bit of a trap. We'll look at the Bronze End and kind of decide what we're doing, and then we'll go from there. So if I was running Devotion, there might be consideration to put, like, Mutants Makers. I've seen pretty good success putting in the task collectors. It's like a proactive play because we have damage deployed, damage deployed, tribute deployed, tribute deployed, tribute deploy, thin from deck, and then this is deploy. So we need cards that we could just play, and that's really important. We need effective spenders as well, which happen to be the jackals more than often, right? Being able to hoard seven boost self by three, so we can 
from full bank get two clicks to make that work, right? Pretty simple. It's got 14 cards. We're getting there. We're getting there for sure. I'm just I'm trying to decide, guys, when it comes to the poison package. I really just, uh, I want to, you know? I just, um, we'll see here. Siggy is kind of like, I feel auto-include for a lot of um, Syndicate right now because we need the bank. So I'm going to temporarily put in Siggy here. Uh, again, Intimidate, Profit 4 for every unique gang category in your starting deck. Increase Siggy's initial profit by 1. So we need 5 categories. So we'll start to build in around that if it makes sense. If not, we'll go for another option. So we've got the Blind Eyes being 1. Witch Hunters 2, Crown Splitters 3, Tide Cloaks is 4, we need like a Cut Ups, or something like that. We can get to that for sure. Uh, well, Cut Ups is like Horston, I mean Horston's pretty good. Uh, yeah, like Horson's kind of like one of our biggest pushes for removal. It's not necessarily a tribute, but it's a way to funnel out coins. And I like to use coins offensively opposed to defensively. Being able to take away their cards to me is more valuable than being able to boost our cards because we play into Tall Punish and a lot of things like that. So we got the Tide Cloaks, we got the Blind Eyes, we've got the Cut Ups, Crown Splitters, Witch Hunters. Yes, so Siggy works for nine. That's basically it. Now we gotta focus on filling up that bronze end a little bit more. Actually, it's driving me nuts. I wanna factor in some kind of like, we either go for thinning, like we fill up with um, with like the casino bouncers or like the sewer raiders, or we go for some kind of card that's uh, non-devotion, I think like a a decree, O'Nero, something of that sort. I think O'Nero might be a bit too expensive for this deck because uh, we want to make sure we kind of have as many provisions dedicated to the actual units in it, especially with the recent nerfs. So that's something to think about. Let's have a look here one more time. So we got Tribute. I'm really tempted to go the Salamander route. Like, I'm looking at it like, you know, this could actually, actually be good, you know? Like, we don't have to go all in, just like a little bit. Because we have, we have space for the cards. Okay, let's just say we throw in Salamander here. Because I'm thinking, okay, yes, if it's Nilfgaard, like, there's poison, but we have poison. We can poison their stuff too, right? Like, that's the whole thing. So, I'm gonna go to four. I like Fist Text quite a bit. Just really good play, non interactive, profit four, poison, you know, makes it pretty simple. We can go in with the Traffickers as well to complete poisons. So, we've got the two and the four, and we need four cards, 30 provisions. So, now we could start looking at options. I just, the thing is, I don't know if I want to go, like, all in with it, or if I just want to use Salamander as, like, a one-round condition, and then the rest of the play as, like, another round condition, and that might be the most flexible way, and it's also something that we don't really see often, right? So, let's say going round one, we poison a few things, and then we slam down Salamander, done. And then we go to the next round, and we have our control round. That's kind of what I have in mind, right? So that could work. 30 provisions. We've got four cards. I'd like to have, man, I'd like to have location. Because in most cases here, we're going to want to bring out like an extra mage or a salamander abomination, right? To sort of engine off of something a little bit more proactive. And then we can transfer a poison and finish another kill. Um, so that just is a very valuable thing to have here. I'm trying to figure out how we can get 
like a heat wave in here and and a uh, a decree so I'm thinking okay profit 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 leader profit profit it's quite a bit of pro maybe Ludo goes in this event maybe so if I tuck Lu Ludo here we go to the 10 spot I think we actually want heat wave. Okay, we're getting close. Now, if I go heat wave and I go decree, we've got 10 and two, this is good. Okay, so if I go 10 and two, there's two a couple options here. If I was going like full blown poison, I would opt to maybe go like, uh, with the bouncers or the raiders, right? One of these, or sorry, full blown poison. I would probably go with the assailment or bombs. But because we're going um, not full blown, you know, we're just completing some kills and getting that sort of stuff done. There is some consideration to run a thinning pair. There's also some consideration to run the hounds, because if we're going to be going super heavy on the poison stuff, we actually kind of want to have a bit more of it, right? So. That brings me to my next thing here. Is there anything that does poison better? I like the idea of morale. I used to play with morale quite a bit, but I just... Uh, I don't think it has its place right here. Five power is too easy to remove before the order, so it's not going to do a whole lot more than this here. So, again, I want to say... Okay, we actually, we do want to thin, but we also want to uh, to have a purify to get around a defender, I think. Or to purify something of ours that's been locked. So that's something to consider as well. So let's say, let's say in that event. Do we ever take Kurt? I don't know if we actually take Kurt, because we're not doing a whole bounty play, but it's a good alternative, because let's say, you know, we do take Kurt, right? And then we, we, we use the Freak Show, we get some good coin circulation, but if this spender's answered, then it becomes useless. And I think that that's too conditional, that we don't necessarily need to go that way. So for now, we'll put a Peller, because I, I feel pretty confident playing something like that. And then we go for a six. We'll just have a look here to see what the deal is. So here's the thing. We've got King of Beggars thinning, this thinning, this thinning. I just, I'm not sold on a thinning package in the bronze end. I think it's a little bit weak. I'm not sold on Kurt. I don't mind a lock and I don't mind a lemons. Like, Lemons could deal with a lot of the trash that's going around right now. Like, the... The Vipers, the Amphibiuses, the Maddox, like, all that type of stuff. I just... It's tough. I just don't know if it's worth... The Melusine... You know what? Maybe it's actually a Xavier time. Maybe it is. We could regret it. Here's the thing. We go Peller Xavier, and if it doesn't work out, then um, then we can switch that, right? For a thinning package or something like that. The only thing I'm concerned about is, do we have enough poison distribution? We've got the one here. We've got the two, three, four, five. If we're trying to actually make something of Salamander, we kind of want to have a bit more. So I'm wondering if Salamander's even the play, or if we should just keep the poison package, if that makes sense, because we might actually see better value this way, doing it that that way. So just looking at the provision slot, what can we do that's a bit better? Nine is kind of a bad spot, isn't it? There's not a lot in around the nine spot. Maybe around the 10? Because I can make some adjustments here. Like, I don't mind... Um, you know I'm probably going to say muzzle, right? Is there ever a line to take a mushy truffle? 
mushy truffle and then the the um the beggars combo could be good because these won't continue to boost beyond like when we hit full bank then we have to actively spend every turn in order to make it work and then it becomes less attractive whereas like the the beggars we can just use whenever we want so let's just say we dump this for now dump this for now and dump color for now let's say we keep poison package sure we got three cards 19 you guys know I'm eyeing the muzzle like I'm looking at it just not talking about it just yet we got tall removal tall removal I'm not against taking the bouncers here like I don't mind we obviously don't want to take junior I'm also really liking muzzle I don't think we missed anything, do we? Fee 3 Resilience is good for a dry pass card, but I don't think it's as consistent. Um, yeah, let's see. I mean, we have points within... It's a win condition, I think. Like, we have... Okay, we have Heat Wave in this, and we have this. I don't think we need to actually have a muzzle in this deck. I think we need more points for ourselves, And... I'm curious to see how this goes. I might still put the Peller in, guys. I don't see a problem with putting Peller in. I'll just dump it in for now. And then... See, this is why I like the Sword by Faction. Beggars. When they're all moving, too, it's hard to tell. So, 23 minus 3... Where can we shave three provisions? Maybe the hideout? Oh, wait, we talked about these first. So 24 and 5. Okay. Profit. Damage, damage, damage. Poison, poison, poison. Tall, tall. Points. The consistency. Consistency. Is Siggy still online? We have blind eyes. Witch Hunter, Cut Ups. Tie Cloaks. We need Crown Splitter, don't we? Are there any that we'd like to play? That makes sense. We got two spenders here, one spender here, one spender here. Another spender wouldn't be bad. Something that actually kind of makes sense. Like, something like this could be good. If it's boosted, damage it. I mean, it's not really doing a whole lot beyond that. This isn't really good for what we're doing because we're not playing a lot of crimes. I wouldn't mind trying to sandwich back in Ludo. One and five, eh? We could just dump one of the mages. Or something in here and pull the sec one off this. Is there anything else that's bonded? With exception to these lies, right? I'm a big fan of Truffle, that's why I'm just kind of pondering this here. If Truffle goes, we've got two, so an eight and a seven. It can also be a nine. <laughs> it's pointing towards Buddy here again. Um, let's have a look. Walter's pretty good, but I have other intentions of a deck that I'd play with Walter. Saul's not bad. I think Saul's kind of greedy though right now. 
It could be a 10 and a 5 too, right? So we'll just open up the parameters a bit. You know, Philippa's not bad. It's just, if I'm running Philippa, then I'm running Muzzle, you know what I mean? Maybe it is a Ludo thing. But Ludo interaction isn't the same as Jackpot. Maybe we open it up to a... No, we can do 11. 11 and... Yeah. Six. I do like the flexibility because if you give something bounty and then you poison it, you're still getting back the coins. So Kurt is kind of like actually good there too. So then six and seven or take the eights and the fives here. It still doesn't fix our issue. Um, we need the Siggy target, right? We need Crown Splitters. See, this makes sense. Like, it's something that we could have. It's just a matter of... Do we actually put it after three turns? Gain nine coins. Tribute five. Gain nine coins immediately. Tribute four. Gain nine coins immediately. Y yeah, it's actually just good, right? Like we will pay four, get nine, so it's five plus the five. You know what I mean? Consistent ten and the reach. So yeah. So there's one thing here. Either we downgrade Kurt to a four and put Peller. Because there's not a lot of good sixes, I find, in Syndicate, right? So let's say Kurt goes. We can get seven and five. Then we got all our tags now, right? We got the blind eyes, tie cloaks, the cut-ups, crown splitters, witch hunters. Like, this is set up just fine. Um, we've got the poisons. Check one more time. One, two, three, four, five. Coin circulation feels comfortable. Yeah, it feels pretty comfortable. And 12 and 2. Could be 8 and 4. An alternative to purify could actually just be like a movement, but this is this is forcing like there's no synergy beyond just like a movement tech um but i'm really happy with the way this is looking so far the alternative could be bumping this up for an onero which might be pretty nasty because we bump this up because if i can't think about what to play then maybe we could bump it up right the kree comes out let's just say hypothetically Nero, where is it? Nero goes in. So we got two, two spots. This could be game changing, you know? That means Peller and what? Squirrel or? Or just like easy, easy cheap points like seven for seven values like something like that could just be work you know what i mean it could just work like i've been liking decree but i haven't been loving decree you know what i mean at least now we get like a second one and we can fetch for whatever we need whenever we need it right seven seven high ceiling that oh wait where's my truffle I kind of want my truffle. 
Do we need truffle though? I don't think we actually need truffle. Just because you're playing bonnet units doesn't mean you have to run truffle. And I don't think there's any better profit as a four than this here. Like, there's always that option of, okay, why don't I just play smuggle? Right? That could be a thing. But, because it's three and it has the armor on the footman, which is kind of nice. However, if we do have two of these, in hand the ceiling's higher, right? And the only risk is that one armor versus no armor. So that's kind of my thought on that sort of thing. So I think that this is going to be the deck for right now. One last recap here. We got Oniromancy for consistency. We've got Professor for engine removal and coin generation. We've got King of Beggars to help pay back for all these expensive tributes that we're taking throughout the game. Siggy to help fill up the banks so we can go ahead and spend here. Heatwave for tall removal or artifact remover <laughs> removal. Uh, Savola here for the point swing because we need points. We have Marils here, which is, again, tall removal or engine removal. We can use it very flexibly. We've got the Flying Redanian here for deck consistency. Salamander hideout here is going to be something proactive to play but also help us complete a poison kill which makes a lot of sense we've got the ludo that's going to be filling up our bank again and helping us out quite a bit there horsen for a bunch of removal on engines and when we're playing with controls so we could set that up and get a bunch of that there widespread punish more poison kills to remove some things on the board and uh that's pretty much it i'm curious to see how it's going to play it's untested here. We'll get into some games. And uh, if any adjustments are necessary, we'll come back to the deck builder and do it that way. Actually, you know what? I'm already here, so let's just do live commentary for this one. I was going to do post game, but I'm like, you know, whatever. Okay, stockpile. We got cheap points here. Profit, widespread. We've got some poison, not a lot of poison. We can get boat out pretty easily though. We have the... There's not a lot of threes, but if we use this following this, we get rid of fives, which is kind of nice. We can poison something, remove the poison, put the poison. That's actually good. I think I dump this here. I want a spender. There we go. And we've got three, six, Let's just dump that for now. That's perfect. I just want to make sure we have no problem getting to the nine coins for the... Oh, they're making it too easy for me. Boost it, please. The one thing that I like about this matchup, though, is that um, they're not rocking Purify like that. So they have a hard time, you know, taking care of these problems once we, we put them here. I just wish I could remove them all. We gotta decide which one's worse, almost. Yeah, there's no other way, because we could self-poison and dish poison, but then we have this with no follow-up. So that's kind of the spot that I'm having trouble with here. I think we just take it. Now, it seems like a good professor, however, I don't think it is. Just because it's not doing anything besides recomping their hand, then I think that this deck doesn't really have much of a problem doing that anyways. So, I don't think we need to care about that card a lot. Just so you know, you gotta take the tribute on this, right? You have to.
on deploy you may choose to spend deploy and turn and destroy self like you you have to take tribute or it dies right so don't don't be saying no i i was thinking about it for a second because it's been so long since i played the card but this is like pretty much the app only application i'd probably use it I don't think we care too much about that. Don't really want to go use Siggy here. It's probably going to be Jackal. It might be Jackal and then it might be Professor if we need it. No professor. I don't know. It's within reach to me. Just click once to keep it away from a boiling oil. So if they... Well, they, they have to play something besides something, right? Ah. It's not safe. Hands pretty valuable. However, it's not a huge lead. We could decide right now if we want to do something crazy. And I don't think it's too crazy to play something like this. Tribute 8. Okay, maybe it's... Uh, maybe it's just this to see where, we, where it takes us, right? Let's just play it. I want to get the coins back, so it's uh, it's a little bit easier to fill the bank up. We can use the hideout on a pass. It's kind of the idea. Actually, it's, yeah, it's all the better. Best not play with fire. That's actually a good hideout. This is what I was looking for here, and then we can just get that boat out real quick. And if they play, I was going to say I pass, but if they pass, we play, obviously. I think the least important card in this event is probably the Professor. I think round control is pretty important for us. So there we have it. So Cobb's at six. They have Amphibious and probably a good hand. If I could pull Poison, that would be good here. Poison something. If we need, we need one more Poison to make this really worth it. Okay, we don't have it. What are the odds I pull one when we... I'm willing to try. Okay, it's not all bad. So this is kind of what I had in mind, guys. We we take a tempo here. And then we can have a look at what they do. Get the boat back out. Because this way we could try and see the siege. We could try and see the last amphibious. All these types of things. Give us a little bit of round control. It doesn't seem so crazy anymore. And we can spend two on Cobb, play the Freak Show, and then just eliminate everything that they play.
You see? So I don't know if the play is actually playing. Like, they'll have to go to do it in one. They'll have to use, like, Amphibious here, which is kind of what we want. So I think we actually take the pass. And then pulling into round three, hopefully we get a Neuromancy, we can pull into a Heat Wave, we have big points for the Jackal, and we've got a couple little things here. So, you see what I mean? Look. They really want to save the AA, and what's nice is that we have last say, so if they do play something off AA, we kill that. So keeping Hensel would have probably been maybe better for them. There we go, they gotta use leader charges or something. Ah, there's that. That's also a thing. I think it's a good play. Scenario, Hensel, War Chariot, Hubert. Was a good bleed. And now we could just sit back and try and kill what they play. Okay, so we have poison. I like the poison aspect of things. This is actually not bad because it's just deployed damage better than keeping a 7 out there. Um, we could roll, like, poorly. Like, we don't want this, but I wouldn't mind having an additional spender. <laughs> I say this, we get Ludo. Ludo's not bad, it's just, uh, it's risky. Um, that feels like a pretty good Marils. <laughs> Just because I'm going to be profiting off the poison, right? Yeah, something like that. This way, if we have to go and play the freak show first we can it hasn't yet. okay so part of me wants to go and take this first but i think that this is more important and they might take boiling oil on it if they don't we're okay Yeah, we're good. I guess they're just playing it for the most points here. Okay. Yeah, we're going to Siggy. I think we're going to Siggy here. Even though we're spilling over by, by the one, I think we have to respect that. Got to play Ludo, or we need to get a coin. That's the thing. Do we kill? There's so much stuff to remove. It's after three. At least after three, boat comes out. Hensel, it's kind of big. Or not Hensel, but Radovid. I think it's still the poison. So that leader just plays for the four points. Twenty six, sixteen. We should be good here, right? 
Take the tribute. Hit that there. Take that. Boat comes out on turn end. Let's go. <laughs> so far, so good. And for the second game, we've got Precision Strike coming up. This could be like an orbs thing. It could be... Who knows? Well, I think we're doing all right. We got some good options here with um, solid poison removal. Tons of stuff like that. So tall removal here. Put back beggars first. This will be nice for swarm. 7-7, seven, seven, kill, kill. Like, I like this card. I don't love it, right? We want to get the boat out in round one, so we got to get a bit more profit here. So we'll go and we'll dump that. The only thing that kind of sucks is this, right? Because we can't poison what they veil. We could take Marils, but and then it becomes a little bit expensive. And they're probably going to be... Like, it might make us have to use a leader. That's kind of annoying. Okay. I'm thinking... Let's just play cards. We don't have to win round one. I just want to get the boat out round one. So transform would basically purify that card. Hideout's not bad, actually. Hideout could be pretty helpful. Take the poison, transfer the poison. We could use self-poison. Yeah. That's actually a pretty good play. Let me get the free tribute here as well. Just store that, bank that, throw that, and then take self poison, get the three coins, seven. And then just maybe one click. We'll see. Or there's that. Do they ever leader it? If they leader it, I think that's okay. But we got to take care of this problem quick, though. That's the thing. I also have to compete. Like, we have to contend. So, do I ever just take my real snow tribute and get rid of this? I think we do. Just sink that there just in case. That's not half bad. We have Heat Wave for Francesca. Like, if that's a thing, we just take care of it that way, hopefully. You know, I'm thinking with Siggy in hand and all that. Okay, let's get rid of this before they get more symbiosis value, right? I was thinking Siggy in hand. I don't mind spending leader as much. Okay. So we'll take the self poison here. Don't think we care about the purify. We click once, get the boat out, because that puts us ahead. Well, it ties us. It's okay. Served its purpose quite well. Just going with this now. We got the boat out. Right? Now we're fighting. This is good. That's a rebuke. Oh. Okay. I'll show you how this pays off. This is quite nice. Well, two that we get a one instead of two, but you know what I mean. On a pass, we take no tribute. And we just play the other mage. No, we continue to play on into that for sure. spilling over here because we don't have a spender but I think it's still worth it but we're, we're kind of forced to pass like we have to at this point that's a bit of an overspend maybe last cards Gord or Alzer
so far quite well. We got out Simlas, Muzzle, all that sort of stuff. Leader. Didn't really spend a whole lot for our self location. So this will be nice to have. Heat Wave. I think we kind of want to dump that. That's actually good. We can keep pace with them quite well if they decide to go and try and crank us in 2-0. I just, um, okay, Cobb's at six. We've got enough coins. That's probably what we do. I run Muzzle and Heat Wave in mine, so this is probably gonna have to be the best hand we have here. Should be four gain on immediately. Oh, man. There's also that. Something tells me to try and defend card. But something just tells me to play this. Yeah, I think we just play that and we, we can take a jackal or something. Okay. Yeah, so... No problem, we're chilling, right? Counter one. Brings out a four. I'm still gonna let them have it here. I think they play. Counters at two. So next thing we do is gonna be taking this Savola play. That's basically it. And I'm just hoping like around three with, like we got some good stuff left. So I think one, two, like heat waves important and all that, but it might not be the most points. This is probably more points. Yeah, I think we we'll just do that. Now we compare their role to ours. If I get a Nero here, I'm feeling pretty good though. There we go. So we dump the poison. I think I just pull into Professor and we thin Cobb. I don't think I actually mulligan back the ghoul. We go first, no big deal, right? Um, just take this. We'll see how they open, and then we'll go ahead and spend. We gotta be careful as to when we take... Okay, that's just gonna die. We gotta get rid of that. Yep. Not gonna click, because we want to be able to Siggy comfortably. Okay, Gord's not that great. So this tells me they need units on the board, right? Uh, okay, if I go take Professor here, that could be a thing too. Four, two, four, six. keep it safe here then we just basically siggy bomb spend like there's that 
That's a problem. Okay. That's not all too bad. They don't get the full value from that. We take Siggy at a loss, but I think we're okay. Both comes out, saves the day. Yeah, it's a lot of points. Cobb doesn't really come out for anything, right? But um, it should be enough. Even if they heat wave the 12, right? Yes? Okay. Just making sure. Take that. 39. Get a little spent here, so it's not all bad. 22 points. They could probably do 12, 14. Yeah. And then the two. There we go. All right, so we played a couple games that seemed to work out quite well, but there was a couple situations where we had coin, but we didn't have an effective way to spend the coin. So that makes me kind of want to consider what else can we do to make this a little bit more optimized. I also find that if we don't draw a Neuromancy, it doesn't really work the way we intend it anyways. So there might be that consideration to dump the Oneromancy and save the provisions in around getting a decree again. Just because like I'm not drawing it and it just feels like a waste at that point. Now we have four to work with here and I'm thinking maybe Ludo goes up to like a... I was thinking more of the Philippa spot because Muzzle's cool but Muzzle doesn't make sense. Like if, if we're wasting coins, we're wasting coins. It's kind of what I'm thinking at this point so we'll have that there. And then I'm going to try to take out the hideout because sometimes it just sits on the empty board and doesn't really do what we need it to do. And then maybe we go back in. Okay. What if I stand by my own Nero for a couple more games? Do it like that. And then to get the last tag, we can go in with another spender, the bloody good friends, get the crown splitter. And also just have something where we can dish a couple bleeding. And that might be a bit more comfortable. So plays a little bit less into the poison, more into the seas. And yeah, let's try this version out. All right, so next up we got Nilfgaard double cross. that don't mind these cards we've got Siggy which I don't think we need on uh, on blue coin we can maybe keep Marils that's good here we could fetch a poison I think we dump one of these actually Start off slow here, get something like that down. I think we might actually go in for like a jackal with the Onero. Actually, this is not a bad play. Do some damage here off the get go. We don't have to worry too much about it. Let's play this first. Yeah. That fills us right off to the boat, keeps it simple. Gives the profitability off of it, right? When we get the, uh, when we pay the tribute. So then we can just basically engine this a little bit throughout the round. But we gotta get like a jackal or something down real quick. Just because I want to be able to spend, right? Can't find ourselves in an awkward spot. We're going to be a little bit vulnerable with the Jackal here, so we got to be careful. And if I they give it spying, so either they play it or try and kill it. Then. We'll find out soon. Beggar's not bad. Okay, Beggar's not bad here. Maybe we just leave the coin, see where it goes. I 
the um, the adrenaline five gain two coin thing could be quite useful because we have the mage. So they take a heat wave like that. All right. That would be our spender, right? I wonder if there's ever going to be a better Philippa. That's the thing. I don't think we can afford to pass here. What if I take Philippa on this, actually? It won't gain spying. One sixteen twenty two. Pay a tribute, then we take a bounty. Three, we aim for Brathens. I think we do play into this more. I'm not feeling too bad about it. Like, we have to win the round here. They sorted out their deck. They're going to be really pushing it. Okay, there's a pass situation. It's kind of a slow play, though, no? Part of me wants to take carry over. Part of me says, no, let's bait the poison. I think we bait the poison. Okay, we're pretty cornered here. They top deck very well. We also do. They go first. We get last say on a tie. If we're going to get a way out of the round, it's going to be here. I think it was worth it. Like, I committed Philippa, sure. But I'm happy to see Brathens come down. Onero, he okay. We need a throw card. That's our second Onero. Siggy's definitely not a throw card. I want. We gotta pull something bad. We have to give away something good to pull something bad. It's gotta be Heatwave, I think. Okay, that's that's all right. <laughs> it's funny. I, I rarely complain that we pull too good. Pulling too well, man. It's not too long of round three, which is all right. Two coins gets cut in half. I don't feel too bad about playing Siggy early. Got uh, some decent spenders like, left. I can pull at least one of them. This is pretty healthy into this matchup. I think we dump this back here, and I think it's got to be that. So, I'm probably going to be taking the Freak Show. That's what we're doing. All right. We got to be careful though, because we like when we take it is important.
like right now no matter what we do we're actually over profiting so there's really not a lot we can do damage enemy ball one yeah we'll just take this here I know it's not optimal but it's fine I think that they went to thin but they have a brick in hand I really think that's what it is so it kind of it plays they have a brick we have a brick That's interesting. That's actually something we should deal with. Let's just take out the, the freak show now. We waste the two coins, but we can get ourselves out of the position finally. There we go. Yeah, so Cobb's at nine, so we'll get him off these tributes. Right, we just need two of them. And then the coin from the fist tech will just round things out quite a bit. We don't really need... Like, we need them, for sure, but we don't... Like, or we're not dependent on having Freak Show at this point. As much, I think. Payday would suck. We got the low roll, which is nice. I think we just put Professor out for damage, almost. Because it's a really good pull for them if they get this. Spend two get yeah, we, we should be mindful of that. Otherwise they might take a coup off it or something. I'd like to play Marill soon because I think that the best card they're gonna pull from our hand right now would be the Marill, so to play for eight points, Savola plays for six. Unless they somehow can give Siggy's nah, even then they can't because Siggy would profit four for them. Okay. That's a horrible, horrible thing. They're going to take uh, Terranova for sure. Yeah, we take this. I just don't want them to have it. I think it's too valuable. So the max value on their leader here is going to be... Six. It's either four with the fist tech, five or six. I don't think they have a way to spend. Okay, they pulled something here. That could be a problem. Do they boost? No, they're gonna greet it. Okay, let's take care of that so they can't spend. There. We're going super tall with the uh, the King of Beggars, though. If you look at it here, it's pretty bad. And we got to do that this coming turn. Yeah, they, they roll poorly. That's all you're going to get. Wait, did I miss something? They didn't have nine coins.
Wait, how did that even work? How on earth? I'm gonna have to go back and watch the tape. Doesn't matter at that point, we do get the Intimidate proc. Last card, Terra Nova. Terra Nova into Professor. I think we still win that, don't we? It'll be close. tie no it's uh, they win by one point okay let's have a look at this all right so next up we got stockpile from northern realms and if you guys saw the last game let me know what you think about that savola play in round three i was a little bit confused i looked back at the tape and it didn't make sense to me I think that they shouldn't have been able to pull off that tribute and we should have won the game i did report it to cdpr and we'll see if they get back to me on that one. So we've got beggars, we've got poison, which is great. A little bit too much poison. Maybe we need the coin for later, actually. We keep the bodies. We dump that. That could be a thing. Yeah, that should be all right. We gotta keep them in check. That might be a good Marils. It's about the only thing I'm willing to commit this round though. play this we'll get the other the beggar out next turn and then we'll fill up revenants that's a game changer I gotta take care of this stockpile revs where have I seen this before I thought I thought I saw Mayamon playing this like a stream I, it might be the wrong person. No, I think it was though, like a few days ago. We put this down, we get the boat down. Maybe not exactly this deck, but with Revenants in it. It's kind of intriguing. What's nice is that they do set up crew. Oh, it's gonna be our best poison here. Probably this. I think we just play the poisons and get out of the round here. They've already committed the amphibious for the round.
Okay. We're not passing now. Twice. Give herself a bit of space here. Two, one. We go down one, they go up one. Yeah, I see this. I see the play. Do damage by three here. You miss one bloody lecture on portals, and it's your life. It's probably just gonna be that. Twenty six fifteen. I don't think we do anything irrational yet. We just wait. If they have something here that's important, then we still have that turn to crank. But I just obviously don't want to spend heat wave. Probably play this. Oh, one piece. Fight for it. that's a game changer. Okay, so they're using leader charges at the expense of like a card advantage. I wonder if it's important. Yeah, we're chasing now. We've got the bleeding and all that. They've got the vitality, this cooldown engine going on. Like, maybe it was a bit too big of a commitment. I really just wanted to find a way to get out of this round. Like, in a good spot, but that's fine. Something like that's all right. Cobb needs to go. I think that they play us down, don't they? Seen cop from hands actually horrible. So they they're gonna pass on it. Alright. We'll take the opportunity here to play something that we don't necessarily care about. So this will be good for a little bit of control. I like this here. Cobb goes away first. These might save the day. Now, we want Philippa and we want Savola and we want Siki. So we got to chuck one of these away. Get the poison instead. I think this one's over. Insanity makes sense. Two, four, six, we take the order. That's big too. As we get the refund, which gives us a bit more flexibility.
is kind of a big deal. I think that's my heat wave. So we gotta take Trivi here, I'm sure. Get rid of as much of that as we can. So far, not bad. I'm hoping that they use the leader soon so we can get more value on the other one. Not having Spender sucks, but at least the Battering Ram's not doing a whole lot off the armor. Okay, yeah, let's just go for let's tribute three though we don't have it. Take the poison first. It's not impossible. Like if we get a good tribute here, we could be okay. Winch. We don't threes though, that's the problem. We've got two twos. There we go. I think just about anything takes that, yeah. One, they have last card. That's fine. I want to see who it was though, because well played. All right, so I had a chance to play the deck for a while and look at some of the bottlenecks and sort of brainstorm some ideas on how we can improve this deck. Now, a lot of the issues were in the bronze end where I felt like we had a lot of cards that were giving us profit, including the beggars, the fist tech, the Fistic Traffickers and stuff like that, and we, we didn't have enough areas or ways to spend the coin that we were generating. So what I decided to do, and this is something that I'm going to be showing you guys tomorrow because it'll be the final version of the deck and we'll make it its own separate video. This is just the brainstorming video. Now, what I decided to do was take out the beggars, and that's going to be one of the hints that I give you guys here. And we won't go over what I added necessarily, but um, for now, we'll just do it this way. I also was looking at potentially these cards being a trap. So I was finding that Arena Ghouls are great, fine and dandy, but they were just playing for seven points and they weren't really doing a whole lot to kind of play into an overall strategy. So they just felt like airy cards, just seven for four and that's about it, where I figured we might be able to benefit a little bit more than that. We might be able to find some cards with a bit of a higher ceiling, so I opted to take these out. Now, the Renegade Mages, I felt a little bit of the same way. I really like the value of the card, don't get me wrong. I like the fact that it's four base power, and then it gets three uh, damage here, but that's really all about it. I found, okay, we're, we're playing this card for seven, sure, but then what, right? We have to use this, then complete a kill with this, or this, or this, and it just doesn't solve the issues necessarily. I think it would have been maybe a bit better in the meta where there was the Scoytail Whisperers and that was a big problem. But I think it's a little bit of a trap if we're looking at it that way. Now, we've sort of narrowed it down to, okay, we're getting coin this way, and if we don't have a solid pair, we could take the Self Poison to get the coin there. That's not bad, right? We have Siggy for a fill. And a couple other solutions here now there is a consideration as well since we're playing now more into the tributes than we are into the gain and spend type of play style okay now we can maybe focus more on our thinning and on our 
our packages to get things started. So Oneromancy ended up coming out in this instance and I looked at other ways to thin and kind of went about it that way. And there's been a couple other changes that I think are overall going to play for higher points. And the version that I came up with feels very smooth. And I just thought that this would be a good experiment and, you know, a process to show you guys. But uh, you got to stay tuned for that deck tomorrow. And once I finish with that, I promise, guys, no more Kick of Bagger stuff for a while. No more Tributes for a while. No more Bounties for a while. We've done a lot of that lately. If I play Syndicate, I have some specific plans. And they're going to be more around Horde archetypes, more around Fire Sworn, more around Cut-Ups and Crimes and all that fun stuff. But we're going to give this kind of playstyle a rest. So bear with me here. I just like to cover things when I like to cover things, and then I like to forget about them for a month. So we'll come back to this at some point, but I think with the deck guide tomorrow, it will conclude what I have to say about Control Syndicate, for the most part, in 10.2, with exception to Crimes. 